All right, hello everybody and welcome to another Pepperstone Learn It Live webinar. This is one of the special webinars that we'll be running over the next couple of weeks for Pepperstone and that is leading up until, of course, trading the US election. We'll be going through multiple weeks through indices, into gold, into the different commodities and, of course, also the currencies. So each week we'll have a special uh, idea and kind of concept on it and for tonight we're going to be talking about indices in general and some of the key leading indicators and all of those types of things. My name's Thomas Atkinson. As always, I'm joined by Tyron Abella. How are you, Tyron? Good, thank you, Thomas. And hello, everyone. Yeah, welcome to what's been a pretty tumultuous week, really. And I mean, if we're getting a bit of an idea of what's going to go on uh, leading up into the election, like we saw that this week, you know, there was a bit of an outbreak of uh, COVID with the president and the White House and the markets went into meltdown for a little bit. So, yeah, really looking forward yeah. to the next few weeks and these webinars that are going to lead into it. It's a very exciting time, Ty, in terms of, uh, you know, it only happens one time in every four years and uh, it's always a lot of fireworks around market volatility. So obviously that also creates a lot of opportunity on the smaller timeframes for traders and investors. Just a quick risk warning before we get started. Of course, the information contained in this video or webinar is generic in nature and for educational purposes only. The information does not take into account your personal objectives financial situation or needs and the information is not to be construed as an offer, recommendation or solicitation to buy or sell or participate in the markets of this uh, webinar. Now in terms of just a quick housekeeping rule tie, obviously the Telegram group, Pepperstone's Telegram group, a great place if you haven't already joined it, the link is on the screen now and we'll hopefully put that in the chat room as well. And also, if you are looking for a recording of this session, you'll be able to find it on Pepperstone's YouTube channel. And also check us out at FX Evolution on YouTube as well, if you're interested in following and subscribing to both of our channels. Uh, they've got a lot of really great content and obviously all the webinars are on Pepperstone themselves. So what are we going to be covering today, Ty? Well, we're going to be taking a look at live chart analysis of some index CFDs. So that's in the Pepperstone MetaTrader 5 platform. We'll also be talking about some key indicators to use on MetaTrader 5 and we'll be talking about scalping strategies for part-time traders that may be effective tools during the lead up to this election. We'll then have a live Q&A with of course us and if you have questions please feel free to ask them throughout of course this session. We'll answer them during the session if they're relevant and then at the end we'll get through to as many as we can. So one of the things that we always get asked is what kind of news do we look for ahead of an election? Is there some news that we know about and is there some news that we don't necessarily know about but obviously comes out and gives opportunity? Well, it certainly is. One of the news events that we always know about is of course Fed Chair Powell and that is from the US. Whenever we see Jerome Powell come out and he's from of course the Federal Reserve in America, we are going to see no doubt volatility on stock indices all over the world. It's not just the American market that moves, but it's a very, very important point. Now, if you're trading a specific index on, of course, your Pepperstone platform, and that is, let's say, an Australian ASX 200 index, you also need to be aware of the Reserve Bank of your country, and you also need to be aware of, of course, budgets and government stimulus. We're basically in a recession around the world right now, and at this point, what is very important to stock markets is, of course, looking at get fiscal policy and stimulus policy. And we just saw a big one in Australia come through, and it is having an effect on the Australian market, isn't it, Ty? Yeah, most definitely. Um, and realistically, we had some uh, negative leads from the US and we were still um, able to post a good result today on our indice because yeah, basically the, the budget was good news for the market. We're certainly interpreted that way, but that's going to pale in, in significance uh, as we move closer to the US election because although this is a, a four-year event um, and we can it only comes around once every four years, this one is going to be uh, like no other. I mean, it's a, it's been a bit of a circus already and it's certainly um, good to watch from the sidelines, but we can rest assured that um, the swing each side is going to be pretty um, wicked, I would have thought. And yeah, we had a sign of that on Monday and Tuesday. So yeah, definitely the news is going to be even more important in the lead up to the next three to four weeks. So we have what's called controlled news tie, and that's the news where Fed Chair Powell comes out, where we have, of course, fiscal policies, where we have normal things. Then we've got 
the other less controlled news where we don't exactly know when it's going to come. And one of those is, of course, the stimulus that's expected in the US. Now, I've put a tweet in here and I've called it unforeseen volatile news. And this is because, of course, yesterday we did have a tweet from uh, Donald J. Trump and basically he said that they weren't going to be signing a stimulus deal. This was the Congress deal and the market really did want this deal. Now because the market didn't get this deal at least initially and it seemed to be taken off the table until the election, we saw volatility return back into the S&P 500, Dow Jones and of course NASDAQ. So this is unforeseen volatile news and it happens throughout social media and I'm sure many people are aware of it. Expect that and the, of course democratic debates and all of these type of things, those types of events are all going to cause some volatility over the next month in the lead up. So which indices are best to start with, Ty? Another question that we get asked quite a lot. Generally, I think trading the index of your country is a great place to start. Why is that? Because it will trade in terms of the real market will be trading during, of course, your daytime. Now, the problem is if you live in a country where maybe the index that you're trying to look at, maybe you're in Australia and you want to trade the American market, you will generally be trading the futures market most of the time and potentially sleeping when the real market's open. Not to say you can't do it, but you'll need a different type of trading style. So if you're looking at scalping and day trading, potentially the country that you live in may have the best index for you to at least understand and look at. Of course, American markets in the end dictate to the really the worldwide markets what's going to happen and sentiment and lead up at the US election is very important for this. And the S&P 500 is always one of the best things to look at because it remains the most important technical chart to study and understand. So when we understand what the S&P 500 is telling us, whether it be bullish or bearish sentiment in the markets, that really usually flows through to almost every worldwide index, doesn't it, Ty? It does, yeah. And probably one of the most important things, no matter what um, indice you're trading, uh, no matter what CFD industry you're trading really in the next three or four weeks, it's probably really, really important to make sure that, and we've talked about it over you know several months now um, in regard to how the trading strategy should work in these volatile times, but it's never been more important than to be scalping these indices now and not try to set long-term positions because long-term positions are just simply not going to be achievable in this volatile market because you're going to get your whipsaws like we've seen this week. So I think you know one of the key tips that you want to be taking out of tonight is definitely implement all of the scalping strategies that we've learned over the last few months in the uh, Preferstone webinars and really um, enact them and play them out over the next few weeks because that's the way you're going to capture the best opportunities because you'll be able to play to the strengths of the volatility that we're going to see. Yeah, it's really it's really what they call the kangaroo market right now, Ty, isn't it? It's up, down and all around and therefore we see a lot of channel patterns and a lot of range bound areas where it's short, sharp and sweet. We actually have some great technicals to show you tonight on the S&P 500 so you can see how it's been trading and some of the key ranges and the way that we break things down. So before we even do that though, lead indicators for market sentiment coming into the election volatility index. If you're not familiar with what that is, we've done quite a few webinars on it, but that's the VIX and that basically shows us how volatile the markets are expected to be over a period of time. Then we've also got copper price. Now a lot of people don't talk about this. I call it Dr. Copper and for good reason because basically out of a recession into a recovery, copper price usually shows us a lot about sentiment of the recovery itself. If copper is dropping and it's doing so before the market drops, that can be a lead indicator of price change. And if you actually look at a copper chart and you look at the S&P 500 coming into the crisis early in January, you'll notice copper fell very, very quickly while the stock market and share markets around the world held up and then they all started following with copper. So copper was actually a lead indicator there. Then we've got the US dollar index and of course the US dollar is a very important thing because often when you see money coming out of indices around the world, they'll go into safe havens. One of those is considered the US dollar and of course they'll also go into bonds. But US dollar often increases when the stock market is decreasing or stock indices are decreasing. So let's now take a look at some of these lead indicators, Ty, and talk about some of the technicals that we see on them and how you can kind of interpret them a little bit better. And I think this is a really key thing that a lot of people don't necessarily do enough. We'll start off with the VIX or the volatility 
indicator in terms of what we're looking at. And this shows us the fear in the market, whether we're looking at a bullish market or bearish market can often be seen in the VIX. And it really is usually a point where if you have the VIX and the VIX is under a 20 level, so that is underneath this 20 zone down here, and we haven't been there anywhere since, of course, this crisis began, you're in a what's called normal market condition. Effectively, you're in a zone where the market will usually move maybe upwards of one and one and a half percent of day max and most of the time it'll move anywhere from about 0.5 to 0.8 percent so much smaller movements when you're way higher in the VIX like we are coming into the election really anything can happen we can have flash crashes we can have flash dumps similar to what we had over here in June and of course more recently in September and this is because the VIX is showing us that there's a lot of volatility still in the market so one of the ways I like to kind of trap the VIX is by understanding price action. We talk about top-down approach all the time, and I'm on the four hour here on the Pepperstone VIX volatility index, and I think you can clearly see there's a trapped zone here on the four hour with body closes either way. So effectively, we've got resistance up here at the 33, and we've got support down here at the 30.67, as in we have body closes all the way around this. We've also got a couple of touches. We've got one touch here, We've got one touch here and we've obviously got the second touch here with no breach of this level with a body close. And if you've attended a lot of our webinars in the past, we always talk about how the body close is the most significant part of the candle. And um, what are your thoughts on that, Ty? Why is the body close just so important? It is because it represents the time that um, where the buyers and the sellers actually opened and closed the market. So as much as every candle is going to reach um, yeah, generally higher highs and lower lows, the body represents where the open and the close basically uh, traded. And that's the most important part. Now, quite often, the, the candles tell us everything we need to know. And it probably brings up another point. Um, a lot of people are quite... Uh, fearful uh, sometimes of trading CFDs and indices because they feel that maybe the technicals are a little bit different. But it's probably um, a good time to point out that when we're looking at a chart and we, we can close off, whether that's the VIX, whether that's um, the S&P 500, the ASX 200 or CBA or BHP, it absolutely makes no difference. And I think that's probably the most important thing about candles and technical structure is that what you see on the chart is representing the buyer and the seller sentiment for that particular trading instrument, no matter what that instrument is. And the same rules apply. So although technical analysis can sometimes seem to be a very big learning curve, in fact, because it translates to all instruments that you can trade in the same fashion and you do trade it the exact same way, like Thomas is about to show us here how we're going to trade this mini channel and how we're going to look for the um, up or the downside movement it's always the same no matter what instrument you're looking at. So that's really, really important to remember. So you shouldn't be afraid of trading these because they're very, very similar to what you're looking at in the currency markets. So basically, as Tyron alluded to, we've got an interesting channel pattern formation here where we've got the two touches to either side and body is, bodies have closed within that zone. Now, if the market is to move up and close above this zone, not weak, but close above this zone, it's very important for the VIX to do that. The VIX is often an incredibly fast moving uh, pair in terms of an index. It often doesn't hold price for long, like we can see over here, and rejects area, as fear does not necessarily last that long. But what happens is if you get a close above this zone, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy that it goes back up to this level. Now, if that's occurring, what's happening to our share markets and stock markets around the world, the indices, they are all falling down. They are all most likely having fear into them. They're probably breaking through key supports. And it becomes that thing where if you see a close above this zone here, maybe that gives us a certain edge to knowing, okay, something is going to go wrong potentially in the stock markets. If the stock markets aren't moving and the indexes aren't moving with this, then that is always a problem. So we could either have it move up or of course we could have it move and close down below. And that would basically mean greater certainty is coming into the markets and the indices are most likely going up. So it's always good to look at the VIX first. The second of the kind of key things that you look at in the market is probably Dr. Copper. And the reason we want to look at copper is you can see here the recovery and of course the fall off earlier this year. So actually if, you, if we draw this up quickly, let's get this crosshair, notice how it starts to sell off at around that point of the 15th into the 19th of January. So we actually get a sell-off 
before the stock indices around the world go down. Then it has a bit of a breather at previous support, so you can see it works quite technically, and then of course comes with the rest of the market. So it preempted the market. It also turns around at a very similar point to where all the stock indices started to move up as well. And we can see recently, copper has come under some pressure and so have the stock indices around the world. So this is a very key point for copper to hold. Basically, we need it to hold the previous resistance, previous support, previous resistance and previous support for it to become a level of, of course, role reversal and for the markets to regain stability. Now, if we see copper fall off, move back down and close below this last week, it's very bearish for the markets. It's very negative for the markets. So again, it's a lead indicator and there's a whole bunch of reasons that we won't necessarily go fully into in this webinar because we want to cover off as many indices as we can. But I think you can see that it helps you gain a picture of what's going on with the market without necessarily having to read any fundamental news or anything like that. Copper can be a key thing that you're looking at. Now, the last of the lead indicators that we're talking about is US dollar. Now, it's pretty clear that US dollar is an incredibly important chart for you to look at into the election. I think there's going to be a lot of uh, success and, and maybe possibly uh, failures that go on with the US dollar coming to this zone. And we've just reached a critical range. Basically, this 93.80 zone to 94 zone and just a little bit lower here where it came recently is all a lot of infighting between bears and bulls in this particular US dollar market. If we start to see the US dollar go back up and close above on the daily here, above this 50 exponential moving average and 20 exponential moving average, all of a sudden it becomes a much more bullish case scenario. If we see it fail here and move lower, well, it goes back into the channeling range, back down to probably things like 9280 in those areas. And that's just from a technical perspective. It's just at a very key point ahead of the election. So it's something that you can use as a lead indicator to maybe either, you know, of course, stock market strength or stock market weakness in the S&P 500. So that's just a few lead indicators. And Ty, what do you think of the US dollar? It's still incredibly important to financial oh. markets out there, isn't it? hundred percent. And it's been, look, it's been building up to this level for quite some time. We've been watching this diligently uh, in the chat room then through previous webinars. But one thing I, I will say, I'll take us back to that one. If we could just go back to that one for one second um, from a technical standpoint. And, and here's the thing, mm. like a lot of people also don't realize that you can actually trade the, um, the dollar index as well. You can absolutely trade it in its own right. And if you do go to a daily chart, well, we'll just pop onto a daily chart for a second. You'll actually notice that um, there's a, a big um, bullish engulfing candle right at the roll reversal zone. So, you know, it's it's really setting up and we're going to get a lot of these setups in the next coming weeks because the market is obviously very, very uncertain as to where it's going to go. Like as, um, you know, depending on who actually does get closer to winning the race, uh, the market is going to be favourable to a, a Trump win, obviously, because it really likes his policies. It really likes these tax cuts. They know what they're going to get. Uh, whereas if Biden gets in, uh, there's a little bit of uncertainty. The market you know, is a, mm. a little bit fearful of that. But in saying that, you can see these key setups, these key technical setups are setting up in very, very important zones. And this one is no exception. This is a very, very important role reversal zone with an engulfing candle right on it. So a break above and a close above on the daily chart above that um, 50 moving average and a clear level here would be a very, very bullish sign, not only for this particular uh, dollar index, which you can trade in its own right, but also, of course, the dollar-based bears like the US dollar CAD and the Swissy, although we're not going to go into those tonight. This has an effect on more than just the uh, index itself. It obviously affects the S&P 500 and also the currencies that are based around it. Yep, so very, very important lead indicator for everything. The US dollar, very, very key for you to start looking at that chart if you haven't been recently. Okay, so let's now talk about types or times to trade as a part-time trader. Let's say we want to get into indices. We want to start looking at indices. When could we trade them? When is the best time ahead of the US election? What's going to be happening? Well, I think you have to think about what type of trader do you want to be? Do you want to be a scalper? Do you want to be a day trader or do you want to be a swing trader? Swing traders have it the easiest. There's no doubt swing traders have it the easiest. You don't have to check the charts as much. Scalpers and day traders, it's way harder. You've got to be more in depth into the market and you have to dedicate a lot more of your free time 
or your full time into that kind of profession. So when do we trade if we want to be a scalper or a day trader? Well, the reason we said before, possibly select maybe the index that is best for your time frame, or maybe even in your country is because you can then get in 30 minutes before to one hour before the market sessions open is in the real stock markets open. And you can start to look at how the indices, how the futures are trading and then start to position in based on previous closes and everything else that you're looking at. This means that you can also target breakouts and potential support level buying that happens in the morning session of the indices. So the indices often either hit very key supports, they break them as well, um, but they usually do something in the morning. There's usually a large move. And by the end of the day, we've seen like a follow on by that move, at least for a few hours, and then possibly a reversal. But at the same time, you've got the opportunity in the morning. So Ty, if you're a day trader or a scalper, do you think it probably pays the most if you're looking in the first couple of hours of trade? Yeah, it's uh, it's most important when you are a scalper, like it, like um, you said, it's very um, more. Well, it's a lot more time consuming than otherwise uh, swing trading would be. In a lot of ways, um, you require a different a different skill set, or certainly uh, a skill set that is uh, prone to being a lot more market active and a lot more precise and almost scalper like with your entries. Because what you do find yourself doing is you know, essentially trading against a trend a lot of the time when you are going for those short moves, whether it's at the start of a market or you know a few hours into the market, quite often it will be uh, at a point where you might be going against a trend at some point. It might not be the prevailing trend, but it could be the, the daily trend. So your skills definitely have to be a little bit more honed and tuned in. So it comes with its complications, but in saying that people who do it can do it very well and the instant gratification that comes with it um, is often very suitable to people's trading mentality. So types of strategies for day traders, obviously there's the channel breakout strategy if you recognize how to use channels. We'll actually put in the room right now a link to a free cheat sheet that we have for some of the best patterns we believe for breakout strategies and just for learning. We've got a pattern on the S&P 500 coming up soon that you're going to see in the charts and you're going to go, oh yeah, that makes some sense if it continues to play out. So channel breakout strategy, always a great thing to look at as a technical analyst. Moving average trends with role reversal, another great one for indice play, especially if you're wanting to look at smaller timeframes, looking at the structure of the market, and we'll go through and have a, have a look at how that looks. And then of course, channel market stochastic MACD divergences and those type of things. Sometimes we're stuck in a range, maybe for weeks, if not months on some indices, and they therefore create a special opportunity, which is channel range market trading. At the high, you'll be shorting the resistance. And of course, at the low, you'll be buying the dip in that, terms, uh, in that term, I guess. But yeah, there is quite a few strategies to get there. From a part-time swing traders perspective, though, it gets way easier rather than having to necessarily even do time frame analysis at one specific time being around the market open like a day trader or scalper does you can get into the charts really 30 minutes to maybe even only an hour a day check the charts a few times a day and make all of your decisions on of course the daily or four hour it's something that we teach a lot in our trading courses isn't it Ty because we think that swing trading makes so much sense for so many people's lifestyles it's just the easiest thing to do that being said they all are great it's just if you want to put a little bit less time in and then be more, I guess, diligent to stick with it for a longer time, it's much easier to be a swing trader. So really, you just have to do that a few times to checks a day, 30 minutes to 45 minutes, maybe up to an hour of analysis. And of course, you're looking more than a daily close candles and targeting major indices levels and setting alerts. And we'll talk about that when we go into the live charts as well. So one of the thing that Ty mentioned before was, of course, US election. Democrats versus Republicans. Stock market performance, is this an important factor? Well, depending on who wins, we've obviously got the certainty and then we've got the potential and uncertainty that comes with a change of government. And in this case, what happens is sometimes certain sectors will outperform others and market rotation occurs. Overall, if you look at stock indices and you look at things like the S&P 500, the DAX, the FTSE, any of those things, and you look at them over a long period of time, they generally go up over time because that's the inherent built-in kind of idea behind companies that are effectively in those indices. But there is sector performance. So here we've got a bit of a chart of yesterday's sector performance on the S&P 500. 
Now, very interestingly, look at the trade in the morning. So this is each one of the sectors and you can see here all of the different types of sectors, the energy sector, financials, technology, which has been very popular recently, those type of things, and how they traded throughout the day. Then you can see when that tweet came in from Trump yesterday and the sell-off that occurred. So we're actually looking relatively positive in many sectors and then we saw that sell-off. And each one of the sectors did do well and didn't do well. And it turns out that actually at the end of the day, utilities were up still and a lot of other sectors were down. When we take that over a year, some again outperform and some don't. But the beautiful thing about indices is that they kind of squish all these together and you get kind of an average performance. You may not want to pick which one is going to do well and which one isn't because you may not know. The fact is that what we're doing is we're trading a safer instrument from the idea of all of these variables are kind of squished together into one package. And that's one of the beautiful things about indices, isn't it, Ty? It is, yeah. No, it's, um, it is one of those ones where it doesn't get um, bullied uh, as much as the, some of the more exotic currencies are. But like I say, this paints a really, really pretty picture, if you know what you're looking for, of course. Um, but it gives you one thing that you don't have to worry about. And like I say, when you are trading the whole industry, now you've got to remember too, there's, and we are probably going to touch on it, we've got, um, it's not just the S&P 500 in the US, like you've got, you know, there's no. three or four ones that you probably should be aware of, mm -hmm. and I'm sure we'll cover them, and we'll go um, a, a quick one over. And some of these yeah. industries um, belong or are weighted more heavily in those corresponding indices as well. So exactly it is good right. to know. It's, it's definitely good to understand these, um, but it's also really Im important to understand. So uh, as an example, the NASDAQ is obviously very, very um, heavily tech-based. So um, you're going to be able to get a really good understanding and the chart like this shows you and demonstrates why that indice should be uh, performing a lot stronger than it is, because it is very, very heavy on this particular industry. So Ty brings up a great point, which we're going to get into, and that is that you've got major indices. You've got the Russell 2000, which is small cap companies. Maybe there's a tax change if the Democrats get in. If that tax change occurs and therefore all the smaller companies are beneficial of that, well, guess what? You've got a potential opportunity in the Russell 2000. If you're looking at targeting the tech sector, the NASDAQ is the one you want to go with the US 100. If you're looking at targeting the general broad-based economy, the S&P, if you're generally looking at the biggest companies and you want to get large cap, the Dow. So you have so much opportunity in the Pepperstone platform in all these different indices. And that's what always gets me excited when we're talking about indices. It's always an exciting approach. So if you've come to our webinars before, you know we talk about the top-down approach and it is so important with stock indices with indices around the world if you're not doing a weekly or at least a monthly down to the weekly down to the daily down to the four hour etc you should know all the key levels because really in the stock indices world a lot of big decisions are made on the weekly and daily charts in particular even if you're trading a five minute chart you still want to know where the major resistance and supports are on those time frames so what we're going to do is we always talk about recognizing trends and price action and everything but let's actually get into uh, the charts themselves. And these are just some patterns. And again, these are all in that cheat sheet that we'll post in the room again, if you missed it. And all of these patterns are really, really great in stock market indices. So role reversal as well. We talk about that all the time where resistance becomes support or support becomes resistance. We obviously don't want to be FOMOing. But let's get back into those charts and just talk a little bit about what's going on in the US 500 first, and then we'll go into a few other indices as well. So we'll just quickly go out here and we'll do a monthly into daily, into uh, or into weekly, into daily check here, Ty, and I'll get rid of these lines. Okay, so what we've got here is we've got a monthly chart. And the way we're going to break this down is we're basically going to say, okay, well, where are our key body closes? We had a key body close here at the 32, kind of 35 before obviously the crisis period. We saw that the market closed around here on the monthly. That's important to note. We also know that the two closes that happened previously, as in we had the close and then it went higher and it wicked off and then the body came back in, was all around that 3,500 level. Well, we want to draw these up on the monthly. We just want to know they're there. Then we go down to, of course, the weekly. And we have here three moving averages that we always have in our charts. The 20 exponential moving average, the 50 exponential moving average and the 200 simple moving average, which is the green line. We do recommend that these are a great starting point for your moving averages. So you should definitely consider putting them on the charts. And we start to see a few things going on here. Firstly, we have 
a little bit of movement that we can start doing based on the weekly charts. We can start to move down potentially our support resistance and just start to get those body closes moving on here. Notice on the weekly, we had body closes over here. Then we have some kind of rejection followed by bullish close. It's like a pin bar bullish hammer that goes through. And then that continues on to, of course, this exact 3,500 zone up here. We then have a 20 moving average and the 20 moving average is quite common for stock indices to come back to after a large move. They usually like to come and hug what we call the mean reversion kind of area. We have at the same point, a point of structure here on the weekly. So we, we're starting to paint a picture again of why this level found support before, why this area here was so important to this particular index. Then we go down to the daily and what we can do here is we can say, okay, what's been going on in the daily? And I instantly see a pattern here, Ty, that I'm looking at and I'm like, wow, this is a interesting formation that's occurring. We effectively have, which will become even probably clearer on the smaller time frame, a left shoulder ahead and a right shoulder in terms of pattern formation. And this is over a daily period. So if you're on a five minute chart and let's say we're closing above the neckline on this particular head and shoulders and it's really well formed, then all of a sudden you could be going very well against the daily trend. We never want to be necessarily doing that. So we do have a zone here where we've got a bit of an interesting kind of market formation. We also have a clear area through this left and right shoulder that we want to dial in on the four hour and start to draw our support resistance lines up. And we obviously have some heavy support down here where previous buying was. So when we go to the four hour, let's break that down now. Let's break down what's really happening here. And we can do that by also using line charts. You can see that there's a decent amount of body closes around here, closes here, closes here, moving average cross as well on the four hour, pretty important. And we go back over to the candles and this is a very decent zone. This is clearly a support issue and a resistance kind of problem before that. We also have up here, Another key point, which is no previous body closes through this 3420 zone. We got through it yesterday, but then quickly rejected it after the news, no body close. So we're really trapped in a zone right now, aren't we, Ty, on this S&P 500? It's, it's a pretty interesting kind of level, and that's the way we break down these charts. It is, yeah, and, and they do find uh, really good support and resistance when uh, the market is a little bit uncertain. Like, you know, we're not going to see a big breakout trend, you know, happening when there's so much uncertainty. So what it definitely does um, in these uncertain times is it gravitates to the most key uh, points in the market. Now you can see this is done at several times now. So it's going to go, you know, up to the 3420 area. It's going to go down to the 3320 area. And yeah, it's going to hover around the, the moving averages, especially the 20, which is the mean reversion. So it paints a pretty easy picture to actually scalp. And this is what I mentioned earlier. Rather than try to um, predict where the big move is going to go to now, you're better off playing the smaller moves because you might find that it may stick within 100 points or 150 points of its current moves, but you may get you know, eight or 10 trades in that in the next few weeks. So you're far more likely to get um, shorter, sharper entries and exits in those particular times. And you can see here, this is a 200 moving average. Look at the gravitational um, move to it and the bounce off every single time. You know, so it always does this um, and it's a really, really good way to isolate those trades, but also it gives you really solid targets to aim for. And I think that's probably the important part as well. When it is in mm -hmm. the middle of two zones, you know, when it does start to trend towards one of them, you've got a pretty clear indication of where it's heading. So you can uh, make your take profits um, or even use your stop losses and adjust them to the levels that you know it's more than likely going to test. So you're really just breaking it down through the timeframes, aren't you, Ty, with the top-down approach. You're effectively saying, let's find the key levels, let's break it down, then let's go into the timeframes. We're in the hour now. We could then start dialing down even into others. But the reason I mentioned this 200 is it touched twice. It kind of the third touch becomes kind of the self-fulfilling prophecy that the first two times were respected. Why wouldn't the third time be respected as well? And that's a really important thing. In this next slide that we're going to talk about in the PowerPoint, pretty much we talk about the one, two, three. We talk about one, two, threes in all support resistance structure as well as moving averages. Because when you see the one, two, especially, and then you see maybe a one, two, three, it becomes more likely something is going to occur, at least statistically. So that's the US 500. We go over to something like the NASDAQ. Well, that is 
a little bit different indeed. I mean, it's basically got very similar kind of thing going on. We have a very similar level, though in this case, we've got a very strong buy zone around this 11.2 that's come through quite a few times had it as resistance. It became, of course, support. It became support again and became support. And again, we're trapped in this kind of kangaroo approach of the market right now ahead of the election. We're not necessarily out of either zone, but we're in both of them. And again, there's little like setups that you can see here in terms of structure of the market. And we obviously will see what happens. But again, breaking it down through the indices. Now, as Ty alluded to before, if you take a look at the Australian market, and that's the ASX 200 here, that's been performing a lot stronger than the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ over the last 24 hours. And most of that reason is because of the federal budget yesterday, the stimulus package that was bought in for the Australian economy and obviously will therefore have an effect on the Australian market. And the Australian market doesn't care about other things right now. It's in a unique situation that if you didn't understand that and you didn't know this country's policy, then you wouldn't know why it's going so strong. Again, though, the price action shows you it anyway, doesn't it, Ty? It does. And I think that's probably highlighting one of the most important points of tonight. And uh, we mentioned it earlier. You know, if you're going to start out with an indice, start out with the one that belongs to your country or you're most yeah. close to, because you do get those, um, I guess, yeah, important notes. Because like like Thomas said, you know, if, if you weren't um, Australian, which many of you aren't from Australia, you may not have known that our budget was released yesterday. And then you'd be surprised uh, why we're up, you know, 100 points today uh, when a lot of the other world indices are actually down. So the first point of call, especially if you are starting, is to actually look at the indice that is the closest to home. Because that's the one that's most likely to give you up-to-date information and probably information that you're going to be familiar with that's going to cause it you know, a reasonable sort of move. So uh, that's what the calendar is there for as well. But you're going to find that you know, the calendar is not going to give you little in, uh, bits of information, although that is a big deal um, for our, our country. It, it's probably not going to appear in a Forex um, calendar. Uh, I didn't actually check to see that it was, but I wouldn't imagine that it would because we don't I'll generally see on. when it yeah, this, this but it isn't well, in all. It isn't in all. So yeah, it isn't in all of them. Yeah, so it's really, really important to focus on the indice that um, you know you know best. And and also, there's other things that happen uh, in the smaller, I guess, in in, in a more of a smaller view where you're going to get state budget. So yeah, we're going to have a Victorian state budget released uh, very, very shortly. That's again going to going to affect the market because yeah, Victorian's a big part of the Australian economy, and our state budget's going to be released in the next couple of days. That definitely won't be on Forex Factory. And every country is going to have these little mini budgets inside it. So understanding your own indice gives you an insight that yeah, otherwise may not be available if you're not you know absolutely condensed inside that time frame like like we are in Australia. So as we alluded to before as well, Ty, there's lots of different indice choice or index choices on the Pepperstone platform. We obviously have here the Russell 2000, the US 2000, small cap companies. I think, in fact, I think Apple was as big as all of these combined. But that being said, which is almost mind boggling when you think about it. But the thing is that this gives you an idea where you can target a different kind of approach another flexible thing. We've got, of course, the Japan 225 here as well. We've got the Hong Kong 50. We have a whole bunch of different indices that are setting up and they all provide different trading opportunities and different technicals. And that's why sometimes some will be going weaker and some will be going stronger, but they're all there and they're all into the approach. For now though, into the US election, a lot of eyes will be, of course, on the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and the US 30 or the Dow. They're going to be the ones that a lot of people are looking at and for good reason. Let's go back into the slides here quickly, Ty, and just quickly talk about a couple of other things we want to always discuss when it comes to part-time trading, scalping, any of those types of things of these indexes. So firstly, we don't want to FOMO. We obviously don't want to ever go through any of these kind of emotions too much. We want to kind of be through the middle if possible, where we're always kind of you know, slightly optimistic, but also always risk averse. So going through these emotions is very normal as a trader, especially as a scalper or day trader. And if you're going to be doing that, you need to be able to keep your emotions in check. And we'll bring this one up all the time because we've all been there where we've probably yeah. experienced some of these lines. <laughs> I know I have, yeah. and I know you have Definitely. too, Ty. <laughs> yeah. And you might think to yourself, I mean, this is an election uh, preparation uh, webinar series. You know, what, what, possible emotions could you be having? Well, 
A lot of people are trying to predict which way um, the election is going to go. Um, and they're having um, you know, a say in their own mind as to whether they think Trump is going to win or Biden is going to win. Now, let me assure you, if you are thinking one of those parties is going to win, it is absolutely a guess. And you're allowing your emotions to basically dictate what you know you want to happen or what you anticipate will happen. Uh, rest assured, their specialists don't know who's going to win this election. No one has any idea. Um, and I think the last election even proved that. Until the time where the counting was actually nearly finished, no one knew yeah. who was going to win. Although in the lead up, nobody expected that Trump was even going to be close. So don't let you know your idea of who you think is going to win because of whatever reason it is yet affect what you're actually looking at in the market. Because some people actually think and try to preempt what's going to happen. And then they start to set long-term positions. And that's what that emotional uh, roller coaster is basically telling you. Yeah, you, know, you mm. want to take yourself away from that and look at the evidence that you see on the screen. Um, and and that's price action. Okay, really, really important not to let your emotions get involved. It happens all the time. Uh, emotions will kick in. It's just human nature. Um, but they are a trader's biggest enemy. Uh, that that we can definitely tell you for a fact. I think also with that tie, you know, sometimes you'll be scalping a 15 minute chart and you'll have that in the back of your mind and you'll be making decisions that are really one to two year decisions. And then you'll be, you'll be exactly trading right. them on a 15 minute chart. We don't want to, we don't want to be doing that. Whatever, whatever happens on the 15 minute chart is, is not yeah. necessarily uh, going to get packed in price. Your fundamental yeah. for a one year approach is not going to make that much difference. And that's your roller coaster. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to be on that one whenever possible. Uh, so we mentioned this last week and we talk about it regularly, which is the one, two, three trading style with price action. And really, if you see an index and it's setting up something like this, where you have multiple levels of resistance and then that resistance is getting broken. This could be a one hour, a five minute, a two day. It doesn't matter what chart it is. When it closes above and breaks through, it's incredibly significant. And obviously the retest of this zone, the yellow highlighted area, is a beautiful area for you to consider picking up these types of breakout positions. They're very strong. They have a clear psychological level that's closed above. And this level where it's the one, two, three, four resistance often acts as the big buying dip support. It's a very conservative type of entry. So if you haven't tried this type of style before, it could be something that's worthwhile bringing into your overall assessment of the markets and thinking, hmm, how many touches were there to that area? If there's over three, cool. We know it's an incredibly significant psychological point. And especially in indices, if it's at like a 100 or a 50 zone, that's another psychological level. Remember when people sell things, they like selling them for round numbers. We all do, we're yeah, humans. We like $100 absolutely. a lot. We don't, yep. might not like $100 and five cents. <laughs> that's, and, so. that's, and that's human nature. When I post something on Facebook for sale, uh, just the other day I posted a little child gate. I made it around $90. I was not gonna make it 91 and I was not gonna make it 89. So um, it's human nature to actually gravitate to those round numbers and it happens a lot in trading. So just be really, really mindful, especially some of those really big round numbers that we talk about, like the double zeros or triple zeros. They're the ones that really um, make price gravitate to them and stick to them when the market especially is uncertain. It's always that old adage, Ty, you never usually make a deal with someone for a, a decimal less than uh, around less than five ties. So you won't do like, say you do like a hundred dollars, you pay a hundred or you pay 95. You usually don't pay 97.50. <laughs> so when you, do, when you do one of those things. Uh, all right, so three indicators a scalper can use. Well, obviously we talk about these ones, stochastic, MACD moving averages. We've got the 20 exponential, 50 exponential, and 200 simple moving average. We mention them all the time, great on all time frames. The MACD, perfect in a range bound market, and stochastic, also perfect in a range bound market. The way you use stochastic, of course, we've got the overbought and oversold zones. We do talk about that in last week's webinar that's on Pepperstone's YouTube channel, so you can definitely check that out. And you can check out also when we talk about how to use the overbought and oversold zones, but they're very effective tools, especially in market opens when you're trading within a known trapped range. But of course, there's always a way to change things up, isn't there, Ty? And that is that we can change up the way we want to use stochastic MACD and possibly even RSI. Now, the way that we do that is that you can use the oversold. Let's say you're trading in a trend and the trend is up. You won't necessarily be selling the overboughts but you'll be looking at buying the oversolds 
at proper price action where you've got usually three, maybe even four reasons to be in a trade. You do this because trend is your friend very much so in indexes. And when you're trading them into especially a US election, it might be a bit kangaroo-y and all over the place, but overall, the general approach after this would usually be try to trade whatever the trend is and trade the stochastic, use it only in the direction of, of course, the prevailing trend. Don't use it against unless you're in a range bound market. So Ty, we always look for market conditions and coming into the US election, we're going to be still, well, we won't really have any more non-farm payrolls. So it's not going to be a normal thing that we look at, but it is going to be about, of course, the overall, whether they actually still have these uh, debates. So if the debates continue, Trump's, of course, health situation and generally Twitter and whether they end up getting back to the stimulus. At this point, it seems like the stimulus is kind of half on the table. Since that tweet, there's been another tweet saying it's kind of there. Who knows? Yeah. But the point is the price action will show us the way. And that's why you can kind of cut that noise out, follow the price action and ignore necessarily the white noise. Try to get, once you ignore the white noise, things become a lot simpler. Risk management is always very similar. You want to try to risk not too much of your capital between one to 2%. And of course, you want to try to get one plus risk reward out of your trades. Try never to take 0.5 to one. If you're risking $100 and only making 50, you're making it very hard for you to be successful over the long term. You have to be a very good trader because you have to constantly be winning because you've got to win two for every one loss. So try to get your risk rewards up and build your strategy around that kind of approach. Now, coming into the election special tie, before we go over to Q&A, which we've got some questions coming in, and if you have questions, ask them right now, uh, and we'll definitely pop them in. We do have an election special, and this is our technical analysis masterclass, and it's 25% off. It's election25 is the coupon code, and you can jump on over to fxevolution.com, and of course, check out our masterclass. We've put a lot of years into this and you'll get access to all of the things above. You get access to all of, of course, the content. You'll get access to the ability to learn at your own pace on any kind of device that you want to. And it's also really geared towards all types of trading structures. And especially we understand part-time traders and the things that they need. So we also have three months access to our private trading chat room in that as well, Ty. So there's heaps and heaps of stuff going on and it's a really excellent course. We put a lot of time into it. So uh, we hope that you're interested in that and that will be great. So I've got some Q&A questions coming in here, Ty, and it looks like they're about a whole bunch of different indicators. We've got to hear a question, how yeah. do you use the MACD indicator and how do we read it? Well, of course, definitely would teach you that, but otherwise we also have some content on YouTube uh, on Pepperstone's website. If you go there and check out the MACD one, we talk a little bit about MACD through that webinar. So that's really good. Yeah, it's one of it's there's a couple of really good webinars in the Pepperstone channel. So definitely get in there in the Pepperstone YouTube channel, sift through all of the old material. We've been doing these webinars for a long time now. So mm -hmm. we're very familiar with the content, but we've got some really good explanations on how to use the MACD indicator and probably just as importantly, which situations it is best suited to. So definitely jump in there and just search the MACD you'll find uh, that one. We're getting a, a few questions about um, live market analysis. Look, we've got a webinar that starts in 10 minutes or 12 minutes from now that actually does a live market analysis. So if you haven't already um, clicked on that, I'll pop the link in the window and you can just click on that. It's free to attend. Um, we look at uh, live market analysis in there. So you can ask your questions on individual pairs in that particular webinar. That will also cover off some currencies. So Ty, we've got some questions in here. Can I ask why you use the 200 simple moving average instead of an exponential moving average? Can you change this depending on if the market seems to be adhering to one or the other, or is it best to stick to a single set? So we generally recommend you kind of stick to the predetermined ones that we kind of selected. Why do we use the 200 simple? Well, we don't want it to be, an exponential basically puts more emphasis on the last couple of candles, the last couple of periods. Now, what we don't want is we don't want to skew our 200 to the last couple. We want to skew it over a broader base. Most people find that that works much better on the larger, larger EMAs or larger, sorry, larger moving averages in general. Whereas the shorter moving averages, because you're more pencil, like you're kind of using them more as a tool of mean reversion, the market's faster, you want them more skewed towards more recent price action. So the 200, you want to keep it simple because you want it smoothed over those 200 periods whenever possible. 
A few other people coming in here and there is a question here. Hi, hi both of you. Uh, may I ask how disciplined I should be in terms of entry based on candlesticks? Sometimes it seems that certain candlesticks are purposely printed for lower timeframes, i.e. bullish pin bar, but price is moving downwards. It's a great, great question there. Yes. So there is a huge amount of pin bars and, and let's say hammers and shooting stars that you often see on smaller timeframes. I noticed a lot of them on the five minute, 15 minute charts. Don't consider a bullish pin bar or hammer or shooting star or any of those things as a definite go signal. Find it, it's not good. It's not that good. Percentage wise, they're not as strong as you think. But when you find them in key other areas, remember three to four reasons to be in a trade, they can become more successful. So the key really is try to get those hammers and pin bars and things in the direction of the larger time frame prevailing trend. If you're trading a 15 minute chart, you get a hammer and the four hour charts long, it's a better candlestick pattern. You're in the direction of trend, much, much stronger. So hopefully that helps answer that question. Yeah, we had a question earlier, Thomas, about the VIX. Uh, we had someone asking about, um, is it available on TradingView and what is the code? Um, that is a question I'll fire off to you because that I'm not. Uh, uh, well, I'm not obviously, I'm we trading trading recommend you use the. <laughs> yeah, we obviously recommend use the Pepperstone Trading Platform uh, whenever possible. Um, if you're looking for it, I mean, you can type in VIX, but uh, and then press enter. But yeah, the thing is that. Uh, whenever you're whenever you're doing analysis, like MetaTrader 5 has been around and Pepperstone's got some great tools in there as well. So there's some excellent tools that you can get access to. There's these new ones that I've noticed here as well on mine, which includes pivots now as well, which is excellent. So definitely check all of that out. But there's a whole bunch of indices that you can look into if you haven't already checked them out on MetaTrader 5. I believe, Ty, we do have also a survey potentially at the end of this. I'm not sure if it's there, but if there is a yes, survey, we, absolutely do. Um, we do. please make sure you fill that in. Give us feedback on how you're finding these events. We're very excited to be coming to you over the next couple of weeks in advance of the US election. Next week, I believe, there's probably going to be gold and commodities. And in the week after that, probably one that heaps of people are interested in, which is currencies, US dollar, yep. cross-currency analysis, everything like that. That's going to be really, really cool. Now, look, if you haven't already, um, there's never been a more important time to be part of Pepperstone's Telegram group. Uh, the information comes through thick and fast. They, they make you aware of all of the important things you need to be obviously aware of, including uh, tweets and um, all the information is there leading up to the election. So if you're not part of the Telegram group, definitely jump into the Pepperstone <coughs> Telegram group. We had the link up earlier so you can watch the replay of this video, which will be available tomorrow. Very, very important, especially at a time when news is obviously very, very important to what the market is going to be doing. It's a very good resource um, and it's populated daily. So yeah, definitely get in there if you haven't already. All right, everybody. Well, we'll see you next week. Um, hopefully you enjoyed today's session and we look forward to talking to you about gold and all the other commodities next week and breaking down more further different timeframes, different cross correlation and getting into more of those kind of five minute, 15 minute, one hour charts. Look forward to seeing you then or otherwise in about eight minutes time and uh, happy trading and stay safe. Bye for now. Thanks everyone. Good night.